You're watching the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Good afternoon, guys. Welcome back to the COP TV, the voice of football's most famous stand. Another edition of On The Radar, keeping you up to date with all of the transfers in and out of Liverpool. Not many coming in, and we'll get into these very shortly. Smash that like button, get your comments in. Please do remember to subscribe to the channel. We'd like to hit 50k as soon as possible. And I know you love the channel, right? Do the right thing and, uh, and press that subscribe button to give you a little teaser of what's to come. I was working with Liverpool Football Club yesterday and a key sponsor. Uh, I can't reveal too much, but it did include working with two players from the first team. Uh, and I had an unbelievable day. Luckily, guys, we did film a BTS video from this day, right? Jack and Jamie were with me. And that video will be out soon. But that is a great reason to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, um, because that video will be out soon. And I'm promising you now, you are going to absolutely love it. Right, but let's get into this one. This is on the radar before we jump into the latest on Martin Zubamendi's contract and a potential goalkeeper coming to Anfield to replace Allison. We must, we must, we must let you know about the sponsors for this video. And they are, of course, Odd Checker, who are currently running the million pound predictor. Very, very easy to get involved. I have left the link for you in the description. It's fantastic. It's Predict the Premier League table 1 to 20 and you, yes, you could be in with a chance of winning £1 million pounds cash, right? Right in your pocket. All you have to do is predict, correctly predict the Premier League table 1 to 20, right? We're doing this on DR Sports as well. We've picked our tables, which we think are the most realistic. Well, certainly I have. Um, but don't forget, you can get involved too. All you have to do is click the link in the description and then you can uh, play along at home and predict your 2024 to 2025 EPL table, right? With odds checker. It is totally free to play. And as I said, you can win £1 million cash. Um, so please get involved with the link in the description and make your predictions now. Let's go through what I have picked, all right? As you can see, I have gone for a Manchester City win. I've gone for Arsenal to finish second. I think, to be honest, second or third could have been Arsenal or Liverpool. Um, in fourth place, I have gone Manchester United. Fifth place, just missing out uh, on the top four will be Aston Villa in my prediction. I've also gone for Newcastle in a top six finish. But here's where it gets interesting, right? Not even a top six finish for Tottenham in the end. They finish in seventh, according to me. Uh, Brighton finish in eighth. I've got West Ham finishing ninth for top table finish for them this season. And with all the wrongdoings at Chelsea, I've predicted them to go back down the table. They finished eighth last year, I believe, or was it sixth in the end or seventh? I do believe they'll finish 10th, um, potentially a bit harsh. But again, you have to have some fun with these as well, as well as trying to make them realistic. I've gone Crystal Palace in 11th place, Brentford in 12th. If they keep hold of Ivan Tony, I've gone for Wolverhampton Wanderers in 13th. A bit of a mixed uh, position there. It's not too good, not too bad. 14th, Fulham. Uh, again, they could surprise me and, and finish well above that. Bournemouth, 15th. Leicester, the newly promoted Foxes, back in the Premier League in 16th. And here's my boldest shout out of all of them. I believe that Ipswich will stay in the Premier League and finish just outside of the relegation zone in 17th. That does mean that, unfortunately, three teams have to go down. One of them, in my opinion, will be Everton. Um, people probably laugh at that one because they haven't and uh, they haven't gone down yet after all the times I've predicted them to. Southampton in 19th and rock bottom of the table, Nottingham Forest. So as you know, it's so easy to play along. It's free. You must be over 18. Be gamble aware um, and make sure that you do get involved with the odds checker, million pound predictor in the chat below. Right, let's get into the transfer ins and outs. Liverpool, as we know, are pursuing the Valencia goalkeeper, Georgi Mamardashvili. Okay, he's from Georgia. Um, 
we know that his uh, movement out of Valencia has been well discussed in Spain, but now a reliable Merseyside reporter has stated that the Reds have stepped up their interest in the deal. Um, he played for Georgia in the Euros in the summer, building on the 23-year-old's performances with Valencia over the last three seasons. He has been linked to the Reds and has been touted as an Allison successor, knowing that maybe Kelleher moves on in this uh, in this window late on. There is Jaros there as well, who probably wants some more minutes. Um, but the key question I'd like to ask you is, look, it's all very well buying a, a new goalkeeper to replace Allison, But let's not forget, Allison's still got years. He's still got years ahead of him. But if this deal does, does go through, the six foot six goalkeeper would not actually arrive until 2025 at the earliest. But Paul Joyce goes on to say that Liverpool believe his mooted price tag of around £30 million would represent excellent value. Uh, Fabrizio Romano also um, spoke about this today. He said Liverpool have agreed personal terms with Georgi Mamardashvili. He is keen on the move uh, or even spending one or two years elsewhere on loan, almost allowing Alisson to... To, to have the next two years. Um, Bournemouth apparently open, opening uh, up to potentially sign him on loan. But right now, the personal terms have been agreed, but there is still no firm agreement yet with the club. Um, when you're looking at loan routes, I mean, Richard Hughes was at Bournemouth. That might be a little link there. He's been named um, as a possible loan destination for the 23-year-old if uh, it isn't possible to sign for Liverpool's first team this year. A player cannot sign, this is important, a player cannot sign and be registered for a club and then temporarily move elsewhere in the league in a single summer. But there are ways to work around it if the club wish to. Um, he could stay at Valencia for another campaign before moving in 2025. Or the Spanish club could sanction a loan with an agreement to buy with Liverpool that would be then made for next summer. Um, but I guess it does throw the futures of Alisson and Quivin Kelleher into the spotlight. I mean, as I said, Alisson still uh, at a prime age for a goalkeeper, you know, 31 years old. He's coming up to 32 in October. Um, you know, top goalkeepers when you look at Buffon, because I will put him in that bracket of, of a Buffon, of a Oliver Kahn, of a Van der Sar, who play well into their mid to late 30s, well in there. So in my opinion, if you were asking me, if Alisson does keep up this level, right, then I would have him in the team as our starting goalkeeper for at least the next four to five years, if not more, but at least, which would take him to an age of around about 36 to 37. Um, and, and once again, in my lifetime, in your lifetime, you're watching at home, he is probably the best goalkeeper we've ever seen and will see for Liverpool. And to replace him, it would almost be as tough a task as replacing Jurgen Klopp. Alisson, for me, and Doyle and I said it on the on the podcast uh, on Monday, that he is the best goalkeeper in the market. He's probably the hardest goalkeeper to replace. But for Liverpool to already be eyeing up a superstar successor for Alisson Becker um, is good planning. I assume they, uh, they've they looked at the contracts and they've looked at the years left on these players at the top level. Um, you know, eyeing up a replacement could be good planning ahead or it could knock the confidence of Alisson, who, let's not, let's not pee around the bush. He's been the best goalkeeper in the world since he moved to Liverpool back in 2018. He is one of the names, though, alongside Trent, alongside Virgil, alongside Mo Salah, uh, who have contracts expiring next year. So... Of course, we'd still like to bring in a, a midfielder, maybe a defender. But for me, the priority now, if we're not going to buy any of uh, these players that we've been linked with, with two weeks to go in the window still, that has to be the priority. Trent, Virgil, Mo, and Alisson need to sign contracts. Yes, we have a fantastic backup, if you want to call him that, in Cuevin Kelleher. But with this new goalkeeper, uh, having been on Liverpool's radar, it looks like there is a long-term plan in place between the sticks. Um, as we've said, uh, plays for Valencia, they're looking to raise funds for him, financial issues uh, they find themselves in. But the, the price could still drop. He was valued at around £45 million earlier this summer, um, but now it's around about um, 30 
And uh, as we know, he's he's 24 in September. Um, Alisson, 31, still at the peak of his powers. Uh, the question I'm asking you in the chat right now is, do you think Alisson needs a replacement in two years? Do you think within two years' time, he's still going to be tearing it up as Liverpool's main guy in uh, in goal? Or do you think this is good planning? Do you think this is um, astute business from Liverpool, knowing that this goalkeeper that we've been linked with could even rise in price in a couple of years? So I am going to be keeping a keen eye on Valencia this season. I'd like to see how he gets on. Let's not forget that, you know, in Alisson's last season at Roma, it wasn't the best season. He did concede five goals at Anfield against Liverpool in a 5-2 victory for Liverpool. Um and then, you know, a lot of people thought, why would we want him? He just let five goals in. But then look what he went on and did. So I am happy with this news. It does look like Liverpool are planning ahead. But where does this leave Cuevin Kelleher? Where does this leave Alison Becker? And what do you believe the best plan of action is when it comes to either playing um, the goalkeeper that we're looking at, Jorginho? Or do you think it's um, next year that we might see him pop up? There's a lot of questions to take in there, but I would like your comments, please, if you can, below, just on what the future holds for Alisson, what the future holds for Cuevin Kelleher, and how good is this lad that we have been linked with, who seems to be, according to all these sources, Alisson's replacement, which, again, is almost the impossible task. It's a poison chalice. Being Jurgen Klopp's replacement, being Ferguson's replacement, I am putting Alisson up in them brackets. I don't care what anyone says. He is that good. So that's a bit of a goalkeeper update. The next uh, piece of news that I wanted to read to you today was from the Anfield Watch, right, on Instagram. They did say, and this could be key, and this could mean that the deal for Zubamendi is not dead in the water. Apparently, Raul Sociedad are having a problematic time of it uh, when it comes to Martin Zubamendi's contract talks. This is according to the Times newspaper. Liverpool might want to just stay tuned. But at the same time, do we still want to be flirting with a player when they're about to sign a new deal with the team that they have rejected us for? Uh, do we even still want him anymore after he's already turned us down? We did hear some quotes yesterday. I don't know how accurate they are. That apparently his wife and kids weren't ready for the move which, again, you know, he's doing what's best for he believes for his family. But at the same time, I think for me personally, we have to move on. I think this is a dead deal now. If someone has flirted with the club quite publicly and then comes out after many days of back and forth, you know, persuasion techniques set out by uh, Raul Sociedad, if after all of that he's chosen to reject Liverpool, then I do think this deal is dead in the water. But if there are any fans out there, and let us know in the chat, are you one of them that still believes that because of these problematic problematic contract talks, that this deal could still go ahead? Do let me know in the chat. I do, though, think it is dead in the water and uh, it's a done deal that we are not going to get him now, uh, which is a shame. But what we've heard since then, and you would have seen it in the last video, is that apparently... You know, um, Liverpool won't be going in for anyone else, which I, I can't believe. I really don't believe that the owners are sitting there knowing or thinking that they're knowing that Liverpool are in the best place possible going into the season. Yes, the squad is 100% good, right? There's a lot of good talent in that squad, both young and old. But to go into a season without signing anyone, being or, or having that tag as the only club, the top club in Europe and in the Premier League that haven't signed anyone, I think that should be ringing alarm bells. And again, you know, I have been absolutely cooked in the last few days because obviously I did that tweet saying Zubamendi is a done deal or it's about to be a done deal. Um, but there is still two weeks and you should still judge the transfer window right at the end of it. Something which I obviously didn't do in that tweet. But um, I do think there will still be um, rumours. I still think there'll be strong links and I still do think and hope and pray that Liverpool do bring in another midfielder um, to that team, knowing that the likes of Tyler Morton still could could go out on loan. Stefan Bejcetic could go out on loan as well, which I think would be an absolutely horrendous decision if you're not planning to replace them. So, new goalkeeper. Are we a fan? Do we still think Alisson is going to be in between the sticks for the next three to four years? Will we even see this new goalkeeper, the Georgian fella, um, for the next two to four years? If Alisson is still on the top of his game at the age of 35, 36 in a few years, and Martin Zubamendi apparently having some issues when it comes to signing that new deal. There was a, an explosion of fake news yesterday where 
Apparently, Luis Diaz was uh, agreeing personal terms with Manchester City. Subsequently, both parties have come out and said this is not true. So you do have to be careful for that fake news out there, guys. Um, but that's today's video. We are going to be back tomorrow with our very, very, very first match preview of the Premier League season. It'll be myself talking about Liverpool, but obviously throwing some um, some eyes on how Ipswich have done in their preseason and how they're looking to attack Liverpool. I heard one of their players saying, well, they're just humans when he was talking about Liverpool. So we'll have all of that tomorrow in the chat for you as well. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you comment with your thoughts. And please, it does help us if you do like the video as well. It really does. Um, just to remind you one more time, this video is brought to you by Odds Checker and their Million Pound Predictor. Just a quick uh, summary of how it works. You pick your 20 teams in the positions that you think they will finish in come the end of the season. If you get them right, guess what? You are in with a chance of winning £1 million cash. Be gamble responsibly, uh, be gamble aware, and make sure that you're over 18. This is only a UK activation. So if you aren't inside the UK, you can't get involved with it. But please do get involved if you can. It really helps uh, us and the channel. So guys, there's your video. Let's get your comments in the chat, and I'll see you back here tomorrow. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this, make sure you check out the rest of the channel too. There's other stuff you'll enjoy for sure. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the Cop TV. The, the voice, voice of football's, football's most, most famous, famous dad. dad. Come on.